So, warmly welcome to all of you for another important day, the last day of our training of Nibosh IGC. And uh, as we try to save one day only for exam preparation, and before we discuss anything about exam, let's talk about some golden words, you know. Sometimes we study, and I'm sure you also have seen some of the golden words, you know, somewhere in any book or maybe on internet or somewhere, that determination is a key to success. Sometimes we study Allah helps those who help themselves. Sometimes we study also uh, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you will stay among the stars. And uh, sometimes we're going to uh, read, you know, whatever you think, the thing's done. So our thought process, you know, have very much critical effects on our uh, life stories or success stories even. And sometimes we say, serve done is well done. And several times we studied hard work is the foundational corner to be more successful. And sometimes we're gonna say, even today's era, that smart work is the best strategy, you know, to be more successful. And someone gonna say, the best planners are the best successful people in the world. So achieving this plan, of course, is a kind of uh, the goal, the objective, or the target we have. And we all know as a professional, any target without a plan, without an achievement plan, or for defining some small, small steps, how we are going to achieve that uh, uh, target or goal or objective, it's nothing. Even a dream without an action plan, again, it's nothing. Like if we have a dream to achieve 100% marks in Nibosh examination, then the more solid plan we required, right? Like how much uh, study time we need to spend or every day or maybe how smart we have to dig out the key informations. Like I just worked, you know, prepared one of the Excel file just for your support. And that Excel file will help you how many of uh, the UK standards are there, which are gonna help you to give reference in your uh, IG1 exam or even in IG2 kind of risk assessment project. And that registered, inshallah, I'll share uh, in the WhatsApp group. But before sharing, I'll definitely share uh, here as well, you know, uh, during our training, inshallah. Uh, there are uh, several techniques. Uh, if you go to YouTube, you go uh, to Nibosh's website even, you know, a lot of techniques are there and they guided different tapes, different kind of things. But action is everything. You know, knowledge and information everywhere we have. But the things we apply, the knowledge we apply, that is more uh, beneficial or giving some positive output, you know, in our lives even. So I'm also going to share a few of the techniques. No doubt there would be a practical example also how to resolve IG1 exam and same way the IG2 as well. But still the techniques what I'm gonna share, it is entirely depends on you later on, especially on the exam day. If you will apply those techniques, the success is granted with the blessings of dear Allah, inshallah. But if you, if, you, if you miss to apply those techniques, still probably because it's only 45% marks, so passing is not an issue. But if you have 100% marks target, then every word, every point, every sentence have to be technically sound, logically validated. And the Nibosh examiner should uh, be happy and excited to see your answers, the way you explain, the way you put your technical, logical approach in response to any question in line with the scenario or even an IG2 format as per Nibosh requirements, you know. So let's start uh, with one of the file I told you, I will share, you know, in the WhatsApp group. Uh, first of all, the laws, the references, 
because as a trainer, I always try to put everything in the WhatsApp group. So you don't need to search here and there. Anything you need, it is already there. Like I shared one of the register for OSHA regulations and one register I'm going to share for UK uh, laws as well. And uh, even uh, we can get some references from ILO as well that is already shared. And one of the link uh, I'll reshare even from the Nibosh itself on their website, they have a particular link which always highlight any sort of laws related to UK market or especially related to HSE. So we can get reference quite easily. But that WhatsApp group again and again, over and over, we just need to click either having a tea break or whenever we get time, just we need to look into what is written inside and maybe we can have some ideas. And then the focus is uh, always, it's a game of practice here. So let me share that file, first of all, the Excel file, what I, I told you I prepared, you know. Because uh, I hope you remember the master list, the log sheets are critically important. They help us. Like if you have that Excel file, immediately you can search and find uh, any segment like related to working at height, related to, you know, the noise related to radiation, all like. So what I did, I, I put a serial number like HSC UK-001. Then I placed the name of the regulation, the year it was issued. And also, you know, the numbers uh, in their system and also the subject that this is all about explosives and regulation status, substan uh, substantive or uh, administrative. So it's quite a straightforward list, you know. The purpose to prepare is let's everything bring in Excel file. Even you search some laws, put in the Excel file. I mean, uh, like we, we studied several references even within the uh, training presentation. I brought almost all here, you know, because all was being referred from UK and some are from ILO, but ILO is an entirely different series. But that list also we can bring here, you know. But it's required to know that hard work you need to do at your end. Like you search any link and you believe it is important for your uh, uh, examination, then uh, copy and paste in that Excel file, which I'm going to share, inshallah. But uh, look at uh, its total almost uh, 104 or because still, uh, sorry, up to 101. And 102, 103, 4, any law you get from UK, still, uh, as per your research, put it here, you know. So let that master list to be more bigger. So any reference we required during the examination, we will just search from that Excel, uh, you know, log sheet, actually. So that would be the great uh, incentive, inshallah, during the examination, okay? So I, I will share it uh, in the WhatsApp group. And it, it's relevant to like, you know, several, like anything related to explosives, even uh, let's take an example of asbestos, radiation, construction, even the cost, vibration, you know, even the general safety, electrical safety. Yesterday we discussed uh, electricity at work regulation 1989. Same way like explosives are still there, uh, gas domestic, even you know for workers, agriculture, offices, first state, free of intervention. So whichever topic you're gonna get in your uh, uh, IG1 in the scenario or even in the IG2 risk assessment, like you uh, elaborated one hazard called radiation and you're putting several controls, then give that reference as per UK regulations, you are suggesting those controls as per your internal procedures or as per NIBO study materials or as per OSHA regulations. You have to be very straightforward in line with the question, inshallah. So I'll share that list, inshallah, in the WhatsApp group. The request is keep it updated up to 1st December and see the result, inshallah. Because that tension will be removed that you have all the reference lists. The second thing I really want to share is Let's study straightforwardly the scenario, like the IG1 scenario, how we have to understand that, how it looks like, techniques we will definitely discuss later on. But let's move on directly to that scenario. Uh, uh, 
even though we have uh, 24 hours you know but if you work genuinely and uh, without uh, uh, deceiving yourself or deceiving to nibosh god forbid uh, you know it requires maybe sometime 10 hours 12 hours 16 hours sometime you go for 20 hours because the new pattern give you an opportunity to browse to search to you know dive in an uh, ocean of the knowledge and you bring some diamond words and put in place uh, in response to your questions and you make your stories more authentic so nibosh examiner should have no reason to give you maximum marks you know because i hope you remember i told you that one technical point is equal to one mark so it's both way in id1 and id2 they have simple straightforward criteria one technical point is equal to one mark what that sentence shows off you know that we can't bring any irrelevant unessential any uh, stories you know which doesn't belong to the question itself so we are not going to put in place you know in response to our questions so whatever we're going to write technically should be sound and yes in line with the question inshallah now uh, these are you know some of the guidance you'll get in your uh, exam sheet or the question like the scenario what would be emailed to you directly from nibosh inshallah the email what you have shared in your admission form the same email id you keep watching and they will share the scenario you know and they will mention few of the instructions like uh, six instructions with that statement this is an open book examination and uh, they are also mentioning you are free to any learning sources even your course notes or websites second is by submitting this completed assessment for marking you are declaring it is entirely your own work that is why we have the moment you submit your ID one exam sheet uh, to Nibosh, then we plan as a learning partner the interview, you know. And that interview, we just double check that this is your own work. We ask uh, several questions according to your submitted exam sheet, and we just uh, make ourselves satisfied that this is entirely your own work. If you can write, you can explain also. So that is why that interview is in the middle, you know, between the learning partner and the Nibosh. And it's a, it's a straightforward link to understand that there isn't any chance of malpractice or uh, you, you didn't uh, copy paste it, you couldn't get help from anyone else like uh, uh, in replacement of you, like he is uh, performing your activity. So uh, there is another second is the by submitting this completed assessment for marking, you are declaring it is your entirely own work. So make sure this is your own work. And also you are claiming work to be your own when it is someone else's work is malpractice. It's clear definition of malpractice, which carries severe penalties. That's why sometimes they ban for three years, sometimes, you know, they refer, they, they don't get, uh, you don't get pass actually. This means that you must not collaborate with or copy from others. So self done is well done. Neither should you cut and paste so cut and paste is also not acceptable of text from the internet or other sources, but you are open to research, but copy pasting is not acceptable. Now, the third is the examination begins with a realistic scenario. Even during the training, I mentioned several times, these are our day-to-day -day challenges or scenes we are resolving every day as a safety leader. So same way they're gonna give one scenario. But as a safety advisor, as a safety manager, they will put you inside the scenario and will see how you resolve, what kind of solution you're gonna provide you. So you will need then need to complete a series of tasks, but our focus should not be, this is a terrible misconception that people focus on the task, focus on the questions, my friend, because after all questions have to be uh, answered, you know, but sometimes you are getting your whole idea, your whole concepts in line with the task heading. But that heading is just a heading. 
the key point is the inside the question itself so our focus should be to understand the question technically logically and then accordingly we must give the answer inshallah now the series of tasks would be there uh, based on the scenario each task will consist of one or more so our focus should be the questions actually that is very much important your responses to most of these tasks should wholly or partly draw on relevant information from the scenario so you can get some references some data from the scenario just to prove your statement that uh, either that solution was not good enough the company was not doing uh, as per international standards or as per safety standards or how they should uh, you know uh, how the responsibilities or kind of safe working system should be working in place so always positive grounds you apply you know in your answers now your responses to most of these tasks should wholly partly draw on relevant information from the scenario so you are free to draw some information from the scenario the task will clearly state the extent to which is this is required the mark available are shown in brackets to the right so each mark each question have certain marks maybe 15 maybe 10 maybe 5 maybe 2 so just make sure and also the number of words they are expecting so accordingly we have to give that answer now you are not expected to write more than 3000 so this is the ultimate challenge you know that our uh, total all questions the words maximum should be 3000 you know best strategy is uh, not less not more actually so uh, total 3000 words and try to distribute your time and word count proportionally across all tasks it is recommended that you use the answer template please attempt all tasks so it's not like the options that there are uh, 20 questions and out of 20 you need to resolve 10 questions as per your easiness no no all tasks all questions like one task may have two questions and the other task may have one question another task may have three questions so the our focus should be to give answers against each question now as i mentioned earlier understanding the scenario is one of the is one of the major element to be successful or getting maximum marks inshallah in the nibosha given but if you are unable to understand the scenario is a huge gap because it would be really hard for you to uh, logically put your answer as per expectations of an ibo system or even the examiner now let's study the scenario just an example and see how it looks like what kind of technical vocabulary is being used what kind of incident or accident or scenario they have shared with us it's a real scene you are the health and safety advisor they already place you inside the scene so for a large supermarket it's kind of a supermarket store that employs 80 permanent workers the workforce is comprised of workers day and night shift managers and a store manager the store manager working hours overlap two shifts so two shifts 80 permanent workers supermarket and you are the health and safety advisor now the store is just one of the 400 under the same ownership so total 400 supermarkets are there but you are deployed on one supermarket not at the, at a corporate level just individually you are responsible for one supermarket even though the ownership is the same the store manager is mainly concerned with keeping shelf fully stocked with goods to meet customer demand and ambitious sale targets so is very much ambitious to sell targets and that's not bad by the way to increase our sales to increase our revenue it's not bad but by killing people by ignoring safety regulations then is a, a destructive point also when not in their office they spend the rest of their time walking up and down the goods aisles checking for empty shelves this supermarket was listed in the top 10 for sales last year so it's a good brand because it's top 10 you know the brand in the market especially in sales and the store managers wants to do even better this year they have told shift managers that they do not care terrible statement they do not care how it is done but the supermarket must be in the top 
five this year. You know, the horrible pressure, you know, that they don't care, you know, they don't care. How are you going to be in the last uh, top five? But surely we have to be. That is, uh, you know, some, some mindset of that organization, some sort of culture of that organization is coming in our mind. How they are uh, giving importance to safety later on, we will see in the scene also. For everyone to receive their bonus, now they are gi uh, giving some uh, sort of incentive plan also. If you achieve and you become in top five, you'll get bonus. But they don't care how are you going to be in the top five, but surely you have to be. Now, as a result of high demand leading up to a very busy national holiday period, 20 additional temporary workers have been recruited. Now, the new employees came in, the temporary, 20 more, 80 were already, so 20 more. So, total 100 mines are now available in the supermarket. Now, before starting the temporary work, uh, before starting the work, the temporary workers have a very brief introduction or induction consisting of only two minutes video explaining the company rules. However, there are no written job descriptions and limited instruction or training above about how to do the work. There is a very limited supervision. There are also no written training records. So no written job responsibilities, no training records or for these workers. The temporary workers are unaware. So lack of awareness or in other words, because these, these points will give us a reason to understand the overall culture of that company and overall the validation or kind of effective or ineffective implementation of safety systems or the opportunities for further improvement or the observations you know so unaware of the company's health and safety policy and how to report any issue so they are not familiar how to report how to report an emergency how to report an issue you know or defects problems to their shift manager they are immediately put to work in busy areas that is another terrible uh, kind of uh, disaster. You know, you are putting the temporary workers, just you hide them and putting in the busy areas. That means uh, more chances, more probability, and they are not trained enough. So where they are needed most, such as the shelf stacking and transporting, stacking and transport. Now we got the processes also for those temporary workers. Empty cardboard boxes to a storage area for compacting. Now we got another, it's a compacting area. They are told not to operate the compactor. This is good, at least orally, verbally, they mention not to operate the compactor, that they are not authorized, in other words, as it is dangerous and has been subject of previous enforcement visit. And uh, because of government regulatory bodies visit, the enforcement visit was there. And they also mentioned, don't let this compactor to be operated by any, uh, unauthorized or untrained, uncertified person, actually. As part of the supermarket's drive to be more environmentally responsible, they have a large compactor like bailing machine. Now we got, got uh, comp a large compactor, bailing machine. This is used to compact what? Waste cardboard packaging so that it takes up much less space when it is stored and transported. Now here the scene started. The compactor comprises of three sections. So the compactor, technically, now they are explaining what is that compactor is all about. The compactor comprises of three sections arranged vertically. At the top is an enclosed hydraulic ramp. In the center is an op opening and about chest height through which the cardboard is fed. The opening is uh, guarded by a safety gate. At the bottom, resting on the ground, is a chamber in which the cardboard is compacted by a hydraulic ramp. Hydraulic ramp. The contents of uh, the chamber can be accessed through safety door on the front of the machine. Under normal circumstances, the authorized operator manually opens the safety gate and feeds waste cardboard into the machine through the opening, which then falls into the chamber below. 
when the chamber is full the authorized operator closes the safety gate across the opening above and starts the compactor using control buttons so first they fill the compactor with cardboard and then they uh, close the door and you know just start that compactor to compact the cardboard this causes the vertical hydraulic ramp to move down compacting the cardboard into the bales in the chamber before returning back up to its starting position an alarm sounds to indicate the process is finished same like you know we have uh, oven in our kitchen so we put something once it's hot we got a beep of sound right so the authorized operator then opens the chamber safety door bind the bale of cardboard with wire and moves it onto the pallets where it is stored for eventual pickup by a recycling contractor the gate and door are fitted with a safety protection device this is kind of a positive thing that the door is fitted with protection safety device that means in normal circumstances the hydraulic ramp cannot operate unless both are closed now some months ago the store manager had arranged for the compactor installer to train shift managers and experienced workers on the use of compactor you then have the trained workers to complete a, a compactor risk assessment this is another positive point the plan was that following on the form uh, the risk assessment the day shift supervisor would develop a sop safe operating procedures for the machine however this supervisor retired and left the organization before the sop was completed and authorized as a result some workers did not follow uh, fully understand the sop and often sought uh, clarification from the day shift or night shift managers no you know this was uh, reviewed even as a complaint by the respective shift manager whenever worker raised any concern so that means workers were somehow they were familiar about their rights so but the problem is whenever they arise their safety concern the response was usually the threat of discipline in the form of formal warnings loss of bonus dismissal or replacement by other more willing workers these are terrible kind of harassment and you know uh, or uh, the signs of uh, poor safety culture god forbid but at the beginning of the day shift the shift manager was told that the compactor safety protection device had stopped working now once something is not working that machine what we do we we put lock up tag up we make sure you know no one have authority to operate it we isolate that area we put one warning sign that everybody be familiar this uh, machine is out of order and then we call maintenance and we raise a work order and they uh, correct the machine make sure it is well maintained now and then we restart right but unfortunately the compactor was uh, co continued to operate even when the safety gate was open the shift manager tried to telephone the installation company for most of the day and only got an answer towards the end of the shift the installation company told them they have could not send an engineer to fix it for at least 24 hours even though they tried to call third party maintenance company but they gave 24 hours before 24 hours hard for them to come now this was relate to the store manager who told workers in the compactor area only not to use the machine until it had been fixed so at least orally verbally he mentioned but no lock out tag out no kind of isolation or you know no barrication like red tape or you know like we do normally and uh, but took no other action to prevent its use neither neither the store manager nor the day shift manager revisited the compactor area so that shows poor monitoring supervision you know or poor safety leadership of the supermarket at shift handover the day shift manager simply told the night shift manager that the compactor was faulty and it would be fixed the next day 
So again, oral communication and they are just talking to each other, but machine is still there, compactor is still there. No isolation, no lockout, tagout, anyone can operate it and safety device is not working. Now, at the beginning of the night shift, this is the same. At the beginning of the night shift, an experienced worker and a young temporary worker took a large pile of waste cardboard boxes to the compactor. Although warning signs specified authorized workers only to use this compactor, the experienced worker loaded the compactor with the cardboard and then told the temporary worker to operate the controls on the compactor. The temporary worker was not well trained, even induction was only two minutes induction. They are not clear with their uh, job responsibilities. SOP was not prepared. That means no proper effective training how to operate that compactor. And also irresponsible behavior of the supervisor who is allowing a temporary worker to operate that machine or even though he is the one instructing him. But that means the worker was not aware about their legal safety responsibility. After a short while, the machine stopped with the hydraulic ramp down on the top of some uh, compacted cardboard. The experienced worker saw that the compactor was jammed. And as it often did, you know, it was quite, quite often, you know, sometimes jams were there. So, and so immediately open the safety gate and reach inside to try to clear the jam. The compactor restarted suddenly, crushing the worker's hand. Now, the temporary worker called the emergency services directly. So no internal communication. Directly he called to the emergency services while he should report to the supervisor or the manager, or the shift manager. So the temporary worker called the emergency services directly as they did not know what else to do. There were no first aider working on the shift at the time of the accident. The injured worker was immediately taken to hospital and required amputation of their low arm, the temporary worker was distressed and advised to go home because definitely he just joined in and uh, had a terrible accident in front. So of course, uh, uh, physiological and psychological, several stresses. So it was told to him to go home. As soon as the night shift manager found out about the accident, they telephoned the store manager. The store manager told them to do nothing and said that they would start an investigation the following morning. And this was no reason to delay fixing the faulty compactor as already arranged. Because after 24 hours, the, of course, the maintenance third party team was supposed to come. But what he mentioned, don't do anything. The following morning, you, because you were acting as a health and safety advisor, now the following money, you are asked to carry out an accident investigation by the store manager. You have been warned not to spend too much time on it. No, you have been warned. This word need to be focused, you know. You have been warned not to spend too much time on it so that the store can go back to normal as quickly as possible to hit those sales targets. The target still in the mind, you know. The issue is not the employees' injuries or accidents. The issue is the sale targets to be achieved. You strongly disagree because you are an honest, straightforward safety advisor. So you strongly disagree with this attitude and argue that it is a serious accident and needs to be investigated properly. You ask the store manager why the investigation has been left until now. And they reply that you are responsible for such health and safety matters. So this is another indicator of the culture, you know, like blame shame game, always putting everything on the shoulders of the safety leaders. Now you ask the store manager why the investigation has been left until now and they, that means from that accident until, you know, you arrived uh, that morning, nobody informed you even. That means you were also unaware they didn't report internally. They didn't report to the safety department directly to the emergency services they called in. Now you inform the store manager that due to the injuries sustained, the accident needs to be reported to the enforcement authorities as soon as possible. 
like several companies even in our saudi arabia they try they try not to report so many accident in gosi system you know or send to the hospital they try to treat them internally and just uh, you know, undercover you know the reason is in gosi system if the graph goes up and up so a lot of like insurance companies the gosi inspectors they will come up and put pressure on you why the health and safety system is not uh, effectively maintaining or not being followed why the accident graph is going up and up so avoiding from those enforcement authorities visits sometime and also caring you know unfairly about their brand value they don't report they don't want to report actually so this is a, a terrible misconception if you don't want to report maintain a good effective safety system and not to let happen any accident now the supermarket store should also expect another visit from the enforcement authority you also inform the store manager that the injured worker is likely to claim for compensation as a result a court case is likely in the supermarket so he is claim for compensation uh, 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 you know compensation actually that is that means we have studied direct cost and indirect cost i hope you remember so element 1 to 4 all need to be apply in our answers you know as a result a court case is likely and the supermarket will need a lawyer this is the least claim of uh, many such claims over the years by workers at the supermarket now we have discussed so far this scenario that means the real scene what happened where happened how it was happened all things are quite clear in the scenario but i really want to know your understanding any one of you can highlight what have you understood from the scenario is there any confusion or any vocabulary or any technical point you are unable to understand or anything difficult to understand the scenario first of all yourself even though it's a lengthy story you know so you surely have to understand in portions you know like i sometimes say chop of the elephant so it's a huge ele- elephant so you chop it up in paragraphs and technical points and some uh, key informations my question is any one of you who claim he couldn't understand what the scenario is talking about any one of you please before we discuss any questions are asking bear in mind understanding of scenario is one of the critical uh, important step you know to achieve maximum marks inshallah in ig1 sometimes people don't understand clearly the scenario itself that is why i am asking you yes please or you want to comment anything about that scenario before we go for the answers or questions any one of you please and you have 24 hours that means you have over and over like you can study two times three times first time might be you feel oh is a hard to understand but second time you will start uh, understanding or oh, you are the safety advisor how many workers 80 workers okay what is type of the industry supermarket you know and what is the overall culture looks very terrible safety culture because no written job responsibilities no training induction is only for 2 minutes and overall culture is sales 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 even by killing people and they don't care that is the terrible sentence you have to remember actually even though that scenario is all the time in front of you 24 hours actually even after that also and also you understood what happened exactly how technically that compactor was designed and what safety device was uh, inactive and not working and how the experience and temporary workers like they hired 20 uh, recruitment like new employees 
just to meet customer demands. And those temporary workers, they, they didn't get proper induction, no proper trainings. And they deployed them in busy areas, in busy areas. That means in busy areas, untrained persons you are placing there. So more chances of accidents or incidents or injuries. You know. And also a lot of threats to you as a safety advisor that not to investigate, don't you know, invest more time, just let the operation to be continued as quick as possible. Then the compensation, then what exactly happened? How was the emergency response? Are they lacking an emergency response? How the training procedure was implemented? Have they provided effective trainings? How the HR have played a role, human resources and shape of uh, responsibilities to uh, give responsibilities in writing to each individual? What about the safety uh, you know, indicators? safety culture indicators, negative or positive. I hope uh, now you will recall what we have studied in element one to element four, the indicators for positive safety culture and negative safety culture. Then you also can think about the risk assessment. Have they done it like in managing, managing risk element three? I hope you remember, now you can recall. You think about the monitoring and measurement, either it was being done in the scene, in the scenario. Was there any effective monitoring or you're not happy with that monitoring and it's not in line with the safety standards. So several areas, several areas by making heading, we can give answers against any sort of question. You know, because the question of course would be in line with the scenario and in line with your syllabus, what you have studied is starting from element one to four, because five to 11 is all about hazards, risk, and several things. And that, uh, and the first element to four for IT1 is entirely relevant to occupational health and safety management system. So first four elements relevant to management system, health and safety management system, but the rest of the elements is all about the risk, the hazards, the assessment, the evaluation, the control actions and certain things. You know. Here also you find the word accident investigation and you have studied that one. How the investigation should carry it out, what are the steps for effective accident investigation. What is it? I hope you remember that uh, scenario we discussed, you know, the forklift was leaking and someone slipped and then, you know, how are you going to be investigating that incident? What are the steps in line with negotiation theories or in line with OSHA or it's up to you. Based on which theories you want to give your response, you know. Over to you, please. Any confusion to anyone? Have you understood the scenario? Otherwise, uh, we can, you know, clear any of your confusions before we move on. Please uh, need your endorsement. Have you understood? or you still have any confusion. We have to summarize the information here and then realize in line with our studies, what is happening? Something good, something bad, something need a lot of improvement, some areas totally are neglected. Overall culture of the company, Overall, the mindset of that company, you know, and the mindset was sales, 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 and to be in top five. While already they were in top 10, but still they want to be top five. That means the damn care about shortcuts or unsafe act or unsafe condition, whatever, just the focus is sales. So that's also highlight the overall commitment, you know, the policy, the commitment, the framework, the direction of that company. And also you realize the uh, top management commitment, especially from the managers, how they were responding, like giving threats to the safety advisor. <laughs> Very terrible response against that accident. Focus was just to come back to the work. 
don't put even more time to investigate that incident threatening to you th uh, threats to the workers also that if you will uh, complain more and more no bonus even you know warnings several so i hope uh, you would have idea several things are there a lot of uh, opportunities for improvement within this company right now let me create a question here you are the safety advisor how you are going to resolve or going to improve the safety system or the culture of that company what things you going to do any one of you please you are the safety advisor how will you resolve all issues you know what sort of action plan you will prepare and execute also any one of you please i'll not leave uh, this scenario until you understand and we can't move forward until you acknowledge and endorse that you have understood what this scenario is all about because understanding of scenario is critically important you know in the exam they will definitely give one scenario similar you know with different type of incident different type of industry they can mention but overall safety concept going to be same either maybe in one scenario you will see oh excellent safety culture everything is perfect but still uh, you found few points to debate in your uh, answers in response to any question in line with the scenario but in this scenario a lot of uh, negatives uh, indicators for safety culture so if you are the safety manager or you are the safety leader what would be your plan of action here? Yes, uh, Mr. Fawaz, Mr. Wada, everyone, please. I know it's weekend, but still you need to participate and please have more energy so we can get some excellent benefits, you know, through our discussion, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam, Mr. Fawaz. Yes, you know the to change the culture to the good culture here. Yeah. Yani we need to make a procedure, you know, and for the our work yeah, and uh, for the conductor, for the suburb mm -hmm. market. And, you know, and we need to make, uh, we need to write our activity and our uh, business. Mm -hmm. And we need to make, yani, with the critical work, okay, and to to put all all the activity to a listed and yeah any to write uh, who is working in this who is going to work for this activity and we need to make sure we they are trained they are yeah any have knowledge we need to make sure they are uh, yeah any uh, they are well to 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 start the work uh, uh, another thing we need to yeah any to list the hazard and and for that yani, activity or that or that business and we need to make sure we understand and they understand for for that hazard okay and uh, we need also to make the prevention of any hazard in future or within that uh, activity so this yani, uh, as a scenario of يعني, uh, of the, uh, so summary of the, of the summary scenario here. Mm -hmm. يعني, this is uh, from, my, from my part. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great, Mashallah. Mr. Fawaz, already they had this uh, risk assessment, Mashallah, but no review. Risk assessment is there, but once the safety sense is not working, even that risk assessment was not reviewed. Even when the accident happened, later on, 
there isn't any statement that shows the risk assessment was reviewed. Even the SOP, like you mentioned, must be there for any activity or process we are performing. But unfortunately, that SOP was not yet uh, prepared or approved or implemented, you know, because the gentleman, the relevant supervisor was retired, you know, and later on is kind of a pending activity. And that's also highlight no way to properly train your upcoming new employees. The experienced employees, they also have some sort of, uh, uh, you know, poor realization of their uh, responsibilities, especially safety as a legal responsibility. So they don't realize that is otherwise they would have, they could have not uh, tell to the temporary workers to operate that machine, you know. The person who's not trained, not authorized, not certified, how come he can operate that machine? So thank you very much, Mr. Fabas, for your great participation. Any Anyone else, please? Have you understood the scenario? I need your word, yes or no, please. At least yes or no in the chat box. At least your yes or no. Have you understood the scenario? Yes or no? So then we can move on accordingly, inshallah. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Muhammad. Yes, I agree with Mr. Fawaz about what he said and creating a clear policy for the employees, trainings, etc. But I think this problem involves top management. We need Excellent. top management statement and commitment with the policy and the benefits. And we need to show clear uh, what's the negative impact of a bad safety culture on our business and that's we can have a lost time protection and everything along with that so i need first the commitment from senior managers and then review my policies and my trainings my accident records and everything great much thank you excellent mr Muhammad. thank you very much and i trickled on a fact you know if top management is fully committed positive trickle down effect would be there on safety culture, overall better uh, sustainable implementation and followership of your safety regulations. Of course, we required top management commitment and that commitment was directly linked with the sale targets. And even the terrible statement, they don't care how they have to achieve those targets. Surely they just want to see them in the top five. You know, like I say, uh, yes, as a businessman, you have right to make money, but not by killing people, not by making terrible injuries to your workers even. The greatest, the biggest asset of your company are your employees, you know. How come you can kill them and in make terrible injuries and make them disabled? And you are thinking that only sales have value, you know. So how would you convince, you know, to the top management, Mr. Muhammad, I'm, I'm with you, please. What is your take on it? How would you convince that management? Because they were stopping not to investigate, don't put more time. They were, you know, just orally, verbally talking to, how would you convince and what would be your uh, uh, financial arguments to make them realize because they are more focused with numbers, like sales numbers, the, uh, the revenue actually. So what type of financial arguments we can give them you know, to convince them but, safety is important? I think from the financial part, it's that when I have a safe business, I have a less consequences that when we think about it. Uh, so basically a safe work environment would implement in my organization will help me improve my predictions and in gaining clients. And I would have new customers. I will have a good reputations, of course, that all involve a great partly in our organization. Even avoiding compensation or direct costs or indirect costs, brilliant machine. Because if their focus is sale numbers, so we should also talk in numbers actually. <laughs> like if because of one terrible accident, if goodwill gone down, how much expected sales you are losing from the market? Because your brand goodwill gone is all over. 
we have plenty of brands you know one terrible accident and and they are sometimes vanished from the market drastically excellent anyone else please have you understood the scenario like mr abdusalam thank you very much for your response like yes you have understood the scenario so we can move on any other opinion any other endorsement by anyone have you understood the scenario please say yes or no so we can put more time otherwise we can directly go for the questions what type of questions are asked and then the answers of course you know inshallah we are talking about ig1 ig2 we will discuss after the break inshallah thank you mr wader for your the word yes that you have understood it's a supermarket 80 workers permanent high 20 new culture is uh, terribly bad culture god forbid the negative indicators are a lot induction is very poor responsibilities are not defined sop is not ready risk assessment is not reviewed trainings are not properly being delivered you know the overall safety devices or kind of maintenance or kind of uh, preventive maintenance system for that compactor is also missing there overall uh, the culture of the company have a lot of negative indicators and most importantly the top management poor top management commitment because that policy nobody realize the safety policies also have value in the communication system like internal external communication and emergency response procedure nobody have an idea how to respond what to do in case of uh, any emergency that means no clarity now uh, in line with the scenario even we personally as a negoshi examiner can create plenty of questions right and we're going to say okay in line with the scenario in 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 technically make link with the scenario give the answers of those questions or giving some uh, task series and say these are the tasks you have to resolve here so same like the negoshi is doing actually they asked the number one question and they gave the title task one worker the responsibilities in the workplace but bear in mind our focus is not the task our focus is the question what exactly the question is asking this is a terrible misconception we just read the task and accordingly we start writing and start putting our answer in, under the task is task is just a heading actually so under the task there are questions so those questions need technical logical answers you know in line with the scenario in line with our uh, international local regulations and all that like the injured worker and their fellow worker may have contravene some of their responsibilities as workers within international labor organization convention like c155 i hope you remember i yellow have two domains like conventions and recommendations right so uh, convention c155 occupational safety and health convention 1981 number 155 article 90 and associated recommendation 164 occupational safety and health recommendation 1981 number 164 recommendation 16 then comment on the extent to which article 19 of c155 and recommendation 16 of r164 may have contravened so 10 marks this is question number 1 so that means here we required our browsing our searching or uh, even though we already have put that uh, uh, conventions and you know like c155 and recommendation uh, r164 even you can see in the whatsapp group or you can search immediately at ilo website and uh, then the relevant article number what they are talking about the the responsibilities with which they have contravened or violated actually or not fulfilled so the number one question is all all about the research and then based on that research you simply put your answer in charge and give the reference right reference is already there by the way because they are clearly mentioning article number the uh, convention or the recommendation so total 10 marks 
we'll we will go later on with the answers in chat but let's study first of all what type of questions are there but uh, don't ignore the note like uh, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario now the second task is influencing health and safety culture so the first task is relevant to responsibilities let me highlight so second is relevant to safety culture now under safety culture he is uh, creating few questions to improve health and safety performance in the supermarket you know that you need to positively influence health and safety culture to improve health and safety performance in the supermarket you know you need to positively influence health and safety culture what appear to be the negative indicators of health and safety culture at the supermarket and look at the number 20 marks just relevant to the safety culture 20 marks my friends and mashallah the way you are explaining the way you have your experience the way you have excellent safety culture in sadara mashallah for you it is quite easy to put a lot of uh, technical points and prove your answer in the best way and inshallah get those 20 marks inshallah but make sure you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario like pull out or pick up all the negative or positive uh, indicators of safety culture and then respond accordingly now the task 3 is all about relevant to the health and safety management roles and responsibilities this question was workers responsibilities please don't mix up huh? the task 1 is all about workers responsibilities and in line with the ilo conventions second is safety culture the third task is all about the health and safety management roles and responsibilities so question is comment on the effectiveness of how effectively the management have uh, followed or you know uh, played your role and responsibilities in relation to health and safety management in the supermarket so 10 marks under task 3 we also have one question not two questions under task 2 also we have one question under task 1 also we have one question so total three questions are there now number 4 is accident investigation and recommendation accident investigation and recommendation why should now this this have this question have two parts like this task under this task one question is there but that question have two sub parts you know why should the scene of the accident have been skewed why should the scene of the accident have been skewed like no barrication no red tape no lockout no isolation anybody can still operate that means uh, the scene is not skewed but we have to mention the word why why it need to be in line with the negotiation theories in line with international regulations up to you again that question required research or maybe sadara best procedures mashallah you can uh, pick up few words from there because those procedures are also uh, developed established in line with international regulations including local as well now based on the scenario only what training would you recommend the supermarket arranges for the different types of workers to minimize the probability of repeat accident so 15 marks two sub parts first is why we need to secure the scene that require research either you have studied something in your material in your books or you can get some help from osha regulations or from uk uh, regulations but make sure you find the answer why the scene have to be secured because there no red tape no barrication no isolation no lockout tagger nothing the machine was still accessible now based on that uh, 
they asked you know the scenario what training would you recommend are you recommending training for hazard recognition training for risk assessment training for accident investigation training for safety policies to be understood training for compacting process <laughs> training for you know uh, even the bosch igc training we can recommend to them to be very honest so what sort of training you would recommend that's what the question is all about now the task 5 is determining individuals human factor that negatively influence behavior determining individuals human factor that negatively influence behavior now our focus shouldn't be the task look at the question first of all the question is what individual human factors might have negatively influenced the behavior of the injured worker the human factors if the top management is damn care and they don't care what is safety is all about what would be the influence here so what are the human factors like the behavior of the store manager the behavior of the uh, shift manager the behavior of you know all the top management professionals how it is having terrible negative or positive influence on the behavior of injured worker now you should support your answer where applicable using the relevant information from the scenario now the task 6 is about risk assessment like showing the uh, showing how the faulty compactor exposed workers to greater risk the question our focus should be the question with the compactor safety protection device not working because device was not working the workers were exposed significantly to the risk a greater risk a good visual way of demonstrating and understanding this is to draw a risk matrix like the one shown below like severity we have and likelihood severity mean 1 to 3 numbers could be major injury rating 3 first aid injury 2 and minor injury so these are consequences the severity and the likelihood could be very likely likely or very likely and 1 to 5 number so accordingly you multiply r is equal to l multiply severity or l multiply consequences and you get the number and uh, you're going to say maybe 6 uh, to 9 number if you get that belong to the red color then to the yellow then to the green you know so according to the numbers uh, uh, you will get a chance of uh, immediate actions or maybe the actions with time bound uh, within one week within one month you are going to resolve or the negligible uh, risk level which is just you need to maintain that existing controls are okay in yellow means existing controls in medium in other words existing controls are not sufficient still need further improvement but in red immediate stop immediate that compactor have to be stopped by the way and isolated and nobody should dare even to operate but unfortunately that was not done because risk assessment review was not done and just one time the had risk assessment still is a good thing at least one document they prepared even though the sop was not done assuming that you are taking someone who has never seen this kind of noun he asked asked you know uh, uh, a and b so two sub parts but under a they have Uh, five numbers one question and then five numbers another question so total two major parts and under each part they have like under a two sub so uh, we we truly have to understand what exactly the questions are asked and you remember the criteria all questions have to be answered and still uh, even though in 24 hours you research you have all the answers but make sure in line with the scenario you are giving and writing the diamond words only assuming that you are teaching someone who has never seen this kind of risk matrix before show how the matrix can be used to confirm that the risk level was acceptable when the compactor risk assessment was initially carried out and question 2 is show how the matrix can be used to confirm that the risk level has changed significantly when the safety protection device was not working when the safety device was working you know the likelihood gone down consequence still could be same like likelihood is suppose one and consequence is three let's take because it's a compactor so anything happens 
it's a crushing you know kind of terrible injury so consequence we can go with the highest number like 3 but likelihood gone down because safety sensors and devices are working so maybe number 1 so 1 multiply 3 is equal to 3 so still risk coming you know under lower you know but if you if the likely you gave like two numbers and then uh, uh, this the consequence is same the severity so three multiplied two is equal to six so the issue gone into the red so oh so gone into the medium even at some level but once the device is not working both are three three very likely and severity is of course you know the major injury would happen so three multiplied three is equal to nine so you need to explain a person who is not familiar about such kind of matrix you know so show calculation and support the calculation using information where applicable from the scenario now the question b part of uh, question number six what additional administrative control measures could the supermarket put in place to prevent a repeat of the accident with the compactor what kind of administrative control measures you can implement so this type of accident or uh, major injury type of incident shouldn't happen shouldn't be repeated at least on that compactor you know and you can support your answer where applicable using the relevant information from the scenario this is question number or task number six and under task there are two sub questions a and b and under a two more sub parts of a with the questions so all questions have to be answered now the task seven is financial arguments for the store to improve health and safety what is the question based on the scenario only what financial arguments could you use to convince the store manager that health and safety needs to be improved like i asked to mr muhammad you know what financial arguments we're going to give to the top management to convince them that safety is important and they should not ignore it you know? so the criteria is all questions have to be answered and task only are the headings our focus should be the scenario and the questions and both have to be understood correctly the scenario we have to understand deeply and the question itself you know if you understood the question even though it's a simple form easily you can understand for sure inshallah but once you understood the question and you have the scenario already and you have plenty of information and knowledge bank with you just how are you going to answer this is now we are going to discuss inshallah so let's start with workers responsibility the task number one and the question is in line with ILO uh, uh, recommendations and conventions what are the workers responsibilities and from where they contravene you know what are the responsibilities based on which article number they violated and those article numbers also mentioned like article 90 and article uh, recommendation number 16 you know that is also mentioned there so let's go with as per the scenario that should be the start of our answer you know in line with the scenario in line with given scenario as per the scenario according to the scenario it's up to you as per the scenario the following responsibilities of injured worker and follow workers were contravened that lead to accident what responsibilities the workers contravened or they didn't follow or fulfill you know now look at the convention c155 is all about article 19b the injured worker contravened this obligation because he had not cooperated at all with employer because he ignored instructions of employer and asked this his uh, fellow worker to operate the control of machine actually so article 19b of convention c155 the injured worker contravened this obligation that means the legal responsibility because he had not cooperated with employer because he ignored instructions of employer and asked his fellow worker to operate the control of machine this is the contravene uh, you know the responsibility which he ignored actually now convention c155 article 19f that is article b 19b and 19f what is saying 
the injured worker and his fellow worker contravened their responsibility because they did not report the danger to concerned person immediately as per ILO recommendation R164, 1981, number 164. So, our uh, convention article uh, C155, article 19, B and F, and also recommendation R164, 1981, number 164, 16A. You know, like we have in Saudi Arabia, like local regulations, we have article numbers, article number A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3 or 1A, 1B, you know, such kind of. So we have to give the clear reference. We are proving and giving their justification in line with the question, in line with the scenario. Now the injured worker, sorry, as per recommendation, uh, uh, R164, 16A, this was the responsibility of injured worker to take reasonable care of his own safety. So our safety is also our responsibility, you know. And his co-worker's safety, but he asked him to operate the control and he was not authorized to do so. By doing that, he put himself and his co-worker in danger. Now, Article 16A, B, C, D, and E, all are talking about the contravened responsibilities. Like the 16B is saying, as per scenario, the temporary worker contravened is for, by following the instructions of injured worker to operate the control on compactor. And as per this recommendation, he should comply with instructions given to him. As per given instructions, he was not supposed to operate the compactor. So you are getting some dialogue from the scenario and giving reference and writing in your own words. Even. Now recommendation article or recommendation 164, 16C, as per this recommendation, it was a responsibility of them to use safety devices by scenario we noticed the safety device of machine was not working so still they used the machine without safety device still they use the machine without safety device now recommendation r164 like 16d the injured worker and his fellow co-workers contravened their responsibility by not informing their immediate supervisor about danger situation which was malfunction of safety protection device of the machine and also 16E, this is all about co-worker of injured worker contravene his responsibility of accident reporting because he had not properly reported the accident. He directly called the emergency services instead of reporting to internal person because the emergency response training was not there. Nobody knows what to do, what is an emergency, what is their role in case of an emergency, you know. So we have answered. We didn't talk anything here and there. It's a quite straightforward answer. We gave headings. Even we can improve further to underline. You know, if you underline, it is also giving some sort of uh, clear or easy, you know, uh, visibility and kind of understanding the uh, Niboshi examiner as well. Because he would it's definitely be impressed, inshallah. Yes, please. All this also for the question. Yes, please. All this question, uh, all this answer for the question. Yeah, for the question, because in the question he asks, you know, in the question yes. he asks, what responsibilities are contravened from the workers, not the management, the worker person, not the employer, the worker. So from the convention. <laughs> Recommendations we are taking, yeah. Then more. Yes, please. And the details. I mean, need to explain more on details. Yeah, a little bit detail because the answer should be in line with the scenario. You you are understanding the scenario and you see, okay, as per this article in the scenario, which responsibility is missed by the worker? You are taking that portion and explaining it and justifying that article like that convention or that uh, recommendation even. because you have to technically prove that the point what you draw from the conventions or recommendations is quite uh, justifiable so you are giving some justification and uh, don't forget the question have 
10 marks actually. So 10 marks, instead of writing in lengthy paragraphs and just one paragraph, the terrible mistake, or the writing without any headings or not highlighting sometime even, you know, did not report, make it underline even. What I mean is, we don't work on presentation, my friend. Like if you are the negotiation examiner, what would be your expectation? The thing should be very straightforward, the pattern, the way, the design, the, you know, uh, the vocabulary, the kind of uh, statements, the points technically need to be sung. And that would make life easier of the Nibosh examiner also. Instead of uh, he'll be under pressure because nothing is uh, easily understood. A lot of irrelevant stories are coming from here and there. While we have to play within the circle. And what is our circle? The scenario and the questions. And of course, the available regulations or the study material we have. And bear in mind, starting from element one to four is all about responsibilities, is all about managing risk, measurement and monitoring, uh, safety culture, you know, the indicators. All we studied from element one to onward, like why health and safety management system need to be established and how it need to be maintained and should be uh, implemented and how we're gonna manage the risk and what is measuring, monitoring and measurement. You remember four elements and all four elements somehow and another we are applying here in line with the regulations also. But that first question, mostly, you know, in the question itself, he gave the reference of ILO and uh, recommendations. Now we just need to justify bringing, reading those articles article numbers like A, B, C, 16 or 19, whatever. So we are just bringing some material from the article and some from the scenario and writing and justifying our point here. And each technical point is equal to one number. Now, how, uh, if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, headings are there maybe from if you get uh, out of uh, 10 marks let's take an example at least eight or nine marks is a great achievement even the way we are writing we are not writing any irrelevant unnecessary informations we are not telling any uh, you know uh, weak stories actually which is not justifying our points in line with the scenario even the 10 marks should also be given, you know, because you didn't write anything irrelevant. And all your points are justifiable and technically sound. And that is what uh, the Nibosh examiners are expecting, you know. And that is why the new pattern, the OBE, like open book exam, is more uh, easy for the experienced people because they are day to day involved in different uh, challenges of safety relevant and resolving every day, they have more better understanding. So it's a game of concepts clearance. And no doubt, the knowledge bank is there. And how are we going to logically pick those words and write in our answer? But don't, uh, you know, write lengthy paragraphs and no headings. You know, give heading, write three, four lines. Another heading, give three, four lines. Another heading, three, four lines. And according to the marks, you justify your answer. Chop of the elephant. Remember that words, you know. Chop of the elephant. Writing long stories and making confuse to Nibosh examiner. And you are bearing in mind just to write 3,000 words. No, no, no. 3,000 technically justifiable, logical words. Not that, to be very honest, a little harsh word, the bullshit stories, actually. No mark. If you are writing anything irrelevant, no mark. They will simply cross, you know. Okay, so let's go for better, further understanding. Like the second question is, is relevant to the safety culture. To improve health and safety performance in the supermarket, you know that you need to positively influence health and safety culture. 
what appear to be the negative indicators of health and safety culture at the supermarket. Now, he's talking about positive safety culture in the first statement, what need to be done, you know, how it should be influenced. But the question is asking what appear to be negative indicators of health and safety culture at the supermarket. So we studied, we understood the scenario. Now we must be capable to dig out all the negative indicators from the scenario and explain with headings. Take the negative indicator, try to create a heading. You have to be innovator, a better creator and put a heading and then write justify with some sentences in line with the scenario. And uh, you know, pick few words even from the scenario and write your own words or get some help from the other sources like IH, uh, ILO regulations or OSHA regulations or HSC, GOV, or even your Sadara, mashallah, Saudi Aramco system as well. No harm to write, but you have to justify in line with the scenario. You can't go here and there. That is why every time they are giving a note, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. Now let's move and write the health and safety culture. What is the definition? You know, Let's have some understanding. So then we will make headings. The health and safety culture is the shared attitude. That's what you study. Values, beliefs, and behaving behaviors related to health and safety. These will either be positive or negative. Falling are the negative indicators. So here we are. Falling are the negative indicators of health and safety culture at the supermarket in given scenario. So what is the first one? Store manager behavior. We created a heading. Store manager behavior. What is that behavior? Explain, you know. The behavior of store manager was negative towards health and safety. His purpose was only to achieve sales targets without considering health and safety of the workers in the supermarket. So one heading, two lines. Point is quite clear. We brought, we pulled out the behavior of store manager as a negative safety culture, negative indicator for safety culture. So we are justifying with our statement. Now, second, reoccurrence of accident. It was not first time. If you remember the scenario, similar jam, similar kind of incident happened before as well. So reoccurrence of accident, that is another negative indicator. As the poor health and safety culture followed, it can cause the accident reoccurrence as the safety protection devices stops working. But morning shift manager did not take proper action. You are talking again, you know, in line with the scenario. Did not take proper action and it leads to an accident. And it was observed in the past that the workers are compensated after accidents. So repetition, one-time accident still is a source of uh, better learning, but repetition of same accident is directly a terrible indicator of a negative safety culture. So our point is clear. So two points, how many marks are there? 20 marks. So we can't finish our story by writing 20 lines, you know, maybe 20 headings and justifying through heading. So we, we are trying to make it eye-catching. So the Niboshi examiner sh should never ever even dare to get a chance not to award you with better marks, you know. That should be your effort. And your ultimate goal, even after uh, taking this uh, example I'm sharing with all of you, your effort should be to improve, to have even much, much better than this. Even though this is kind of a good example as per my experience, the way uh, you know, I'm teaching actually. Uh, this is the best example, according to me. But what I mean is, every person is unique. Maybe you can set a much, much better example in line with the scenario and creating more headings and more logical points. You know. Now, another point: no proper emergency response procedure. I'm not writing anything from my side. I'm just taking everything from the scenario. Just I know how to make headings and how to write different sentences. You know. No proper emergency response procedure. Temporary workers was not aware of emergency response procedure at the time of accident. He was not aware of emergency response procedure. 
that is why he called emergency services directly instead of calling night shift manager so no proper emergency response procedure even the sop of the compactor was not prepared so what other procedure we can expect you now poor safety induction that is another indicator induction is only for 2 minutes and what they mentioned some rules so poor safety induction of new worker the temporary workers had a brief safety induction we do only for 2 minutes but they are not they are not brief properly about their job description and they are not instructed properly to carry out the task even no discussion what to do in case of emergency no discussion if um, safety device is not working they have to stop the machine they have to inform their immediate boss and make sure this machine is not being reused or uh, or no one is even thinking to use it is properly isolated have to be locked out together then another indicator insufficient first aid facility a company having claiming no first aid facilities is a negative indicator for the safety culture so there is a lack of first aiders in the supermarket as at the time of accident no first aider was working in that shift so you are just re explaining the scenario to be very honest by making different headings and justifying your answer mashallah in line with the question in line with the scenario and it's not mandated that every time you need to bring a lot of references from outside world if you can justify your answer in line with the scenario is more than enough and that's what you studied also in the nibosh theories you know the job location of temporary workers temporary workers had not properly trained and they were assigned in an area which was busy and highly risk so job location of temporary workers had not properly trained and they were assigned in an area which was busy and highly risk that is why the next heading logically we can create improper training record of workers there is no proper training record of workers had maintained that supermarket no lack of monitoring as the store manager and shift manager are aware that compactor safety device is not working but even after that they did not revisited you know the compactor area and the supermarket and no safety personnel was available at night shift when accident happened so lack of monitoring element number 4 monitoring and measurement now improper response to workers complaints in proper response to workers complaint you know they were threatening actually whenever workers complain about any issue shift manager threatens them in the form of warnings loss of bonus termination and replacement with other workers you are getting the same words from the scenario and writing just re explaining rewriting actually of the same scenario because the question is straight forward we have to pull out all the uh, indicators for negative safety culture now ignoring enforcement authorities guidelines in the scenario it was observed that the compactor area was noticed by enforcement agencies before at the time of accident risk was the same as before so they also ignored the enforcement authorities guidelines you know even they visited they highlighted several points but unfortunately the same condition so they damn care what the law is saying even incomplete safe operating procedure from where i am getting these headings from the scenario incomplete safe operating procedures it was observed in the scenario that the workers are using compactor machine without a safety guard and not following safety operating procedures no ignoring safety signage you know there are signage on the compactor somewhere with a steel plate or some signs are painted even you know in the in the scenario it was observed that safety signage are ignored by the injured person and his fellow workers that there was a warning sign it is written in the scenario specified about the use of compactor that authorized workers only to use it and they ignored it which leads to what accident not damaged machine used in the scenario it was mentioned that the compactor was jammed before also and they are still using you know and in the past which means that without maintaining they are using the damaged defective machine from a long time 
ignoring safety device it is observed that compactor safety device was not working but shift manager ignored the safety and did not take measures to disconnect the compactor accident investigation uphold like in the scenario it was observed that accident happened in the night shift and investigation delayed until next morning even again threats to the safety advisor like improper hazard communication method this is another one it is observed in the scenario that compactor safety device is damaged but the morning shift manager only verbally informed the night shift manager about the fault that is the reason i am telling we have to understand the scenario we have to understand the scenario because everything is coming from the scenario you know store manager's attitude it was observed in the scenario that store manager main focus was to achieve sales targets and he don't care about health and safety of workers improper guidance about job the temporary workers are not trained and guided properly about their job description and they are assigned in area where they have a workload no lockout tackle procedures as compact safety device and as per mr muhammad you know i can add one more you know thanks to mr muhammad because the biggest room is the room for further improvement like poor management commitment you know this is overall picture of the scenario like poor management commitment in just for a minute thank you mr muhammad because i'm i'm always improving the answers no uh, poor management commitment in line with this scenario is clearly highlighted that the management commitment for health and safety was not was not clearly highlighted was not clearly proved actually through a uh, visible management on floor as the overall management uh mindset was to achieve the sales targets no policy approvals no role to no role to review risk assessments no proper support to follow legal regulations we can write so many long stories because everything we mentioned above are also the indicators of uh, poor management commitment and that's another i would say the terrible indicator of Uh, negative safety culture thank you very much mr mohammed again masha so what i mean is so we can make heading and we start writing uh, in line with the scenario now the third task is uh, health and safety management roles and responsibilities so uh, the question is comment the effectiveness of roles and responsibilities in relation to health and safety management in the supermarket 10 marks again the answer should be in line with the scenario now according to the given scenario effectiveness of roles and responsibilities of health and safety management observation in the supermarket is as follows like lack of leadership in the supermarket there was lack of senior management leadership presence of all health and safety and this is another you know the same lack of leadership we can make as a negative 
indicator for the safety culture. Lack of communication, there was not effective communications was available. Improper supervision of activities for critical activities, no proper supervision was provided. Improper accident investigation, management was not monitoring the accident investigation procedure. Lack of resources, there was lack of resources to correct the unsafe condition of damaged machine and it was jammed before as well. Safety policy, temporary workers were not briefed properly about supermarket safety policy this is another you know indicator so we can put it here also because it's a 20 marks uh, you know question so getting 20 marks at least we have to write sufficiently now risk assessment review to review risk assessment and performance no system was available has a recognition and incident reporting again has a recognition and accident reporting was not effective Monitoring of safety performance, another heading we can create here. You know, like this. There was not appropriate monitoring of staff safety performance. Establishment of safety performance, it is the responsibility of health and safety management to establish safety performance goal, but it is observed in the scenario that store manager goal was to achieve only sales targets. So that is uh, task three and task four is accident investigation recommendations. Why? No, it has two parts. Why should the scene of the accident have been scared? And based on the scenario only, what training would you recommend? So this is, I told you, you know, you have to search in reference to the given scenario, falling step were not being followed effective while it is the legal requirement as well. The scene of the accident shall be scared. Accident scene should be secured to save people. Accident scene should be secured to prevent any alternation and also to secure gather circumstantial evidences and also need to secure to collect factual evidences. And also it will provide proper and real sketch of accident scene, which will be helpful to find out. So five numbers for 4A. So just why we need to secure the scene. Now the 4B is all about what type of trainings you're gonna recommend. So as per my understanding, maybe you can add uh, uh, more topics, but according to the given scenario, I would recommend following trainings for supermarket workers and managers to minimize the chances of repeated accident, like loader training, first of all, because that is missing. Then job specific training, the worker shall be provided the job specific training so that they will be aware about the job and how to perform it safely and how to control associated hazard present on the job. Same way, incident, accident investigation training, risk assessment training, uh, I'm recommending because, and we can give justification from the scenario also. Has a recognition reporting. Why I'm recommending this training? Because as I observed in the given scenario that almost all the workers were failed to recognize, failed to recognize the hazard of damage machine. And even when they identify, they are not able to report it, other workers and managers, that result in accident. BBS, because this culture is overall is a challenge. So BBS, behavior-based safety training should also be given like behavior-based training is recommended for all the supermarket managers. It will improve their behavior towards health and safety and they will start taking it seriously as important matter. Now, Nibosh IG's training, I recommend this training for supermarket managers so that they will get proper awareness about health and safety management system workplace hazards control and risk assessment and also the machine guarding training you know i recommend this training for permanent and temporary workers as it is observed in the scenario that they are they opened the safety guard while it was connected to electric power so that lead to accident so uh, that was question number four like what type of training we are recommending you can add even more topics you know it is up to you but make sure you make a heading and you justify in line with the scenario, why you are recommending that training. The task five is determining uh, individual human factors that negatively influence behavior. Previous question we got in number three, I believe, the indicators, the negative indicators. Now we are talking about human factors that negatively influence behavior. And in the element, uh, uh, you know, starting from one to four, we have studied human factors also. What individuals human factors might have negatively influenced the behavior of the injured worker? Again, headings. 
based on the given scenario following are the individual human factors that may be negatively influence the behavior of injured worker first is the shift shift managers competency shift managers were not competent enough as they found out regarding malfunction of the uh, safety device they did not take any action that might have negative influence that means their risk perception their risk perception they thought nothing would happen you know how come you can be lucky everywhere every time you know store managers shift manager risk perception after telling verbally about fault of safety device of a machine they never revisited the area it showed their weak risk perception and we have studied what is risk perception and managing risk element number 3 that might have negative influence of injured workers behavior now risk per uh, perception of shift manager he was told about compactor safety protection device is faulty but he has not asked to isolate the machine which shows his weak risk perception this might have negative influence now temporary worker skill as temporary workers don't have enough experience and knowledge they don't require skill to do the job that might negatively influence the behavior of injured worker the shift manager's behavior when someone complain about any problem they are threatening you know about their job this might have negative influence temporary workers personality as well risk aversion of the temporary worker was not up to the mark that might have negative influence on injured worker you know and again here also mr mohammed we can add poor management commitment or the management is not leading by example that is also we can highlight it's up to us how much we want to write according to the given mark you know like if marks are five and you are writing 50 headings or more than 20 headings it's, it's not uh, clearly justified you so uh, number 6 is showing how the faulty compactor expose workers to greater risk you know with the compactor safety protection device was not working the workers were exposed you know so they gave the risk assessment likelihood and severity but we need to explain that is why they created two parts one is uh, uh, like you know uh, the question 6a also have two questions five five marks are there and uh, b is what administrative controls uh, could be there you know in response to the accident with the compactor so you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario so let's talk with 6a i the risk matrix shown in the matrix is 3 multiply 3 risk matrix where x you know we are explaining the same matrix like x indicates indicates the likelihood of the accident and increasing the left to the right in case likelihood is very unlikely it will be shown by number 1 so the number game but again it depends on your risk perception how you perceive what would be the consequence what would be the likelihood you know that is why the risk assessment risk assessment should never be done individually it should be a kind of uh, team work so because everyone have was a uh, different risk perception so we can bring people inside the technically expert and then we have a debate and see what the majority is saying if majority technically is correct like they are saying likelihood is 3 and severity is al already 3 so then 3 multiply 3 is equal to 9 so risk have to be controlled so you can write all those stories for uh, better understanding of the person like the color indicates in the given matrix green is acceptable risk yellow is tolerable risk and red is unacceptable risk and what is the risk is equal to likelihood multiplied severity or consequences you know but the consequence word is not used there that means r is equal to l uh multiply c or multiply s you know that is the risk formula now when the initial assessment of compactor was carried out it was considered that the compactor worker will be assigned for the job safe operating procedure uh, shall be followed safety signs shall be placed all the safety device sensors were so these were existing controls and they were quite happy you know that is why the risk they calculated was very unlikely 
but severity is there, major injury service. So one multiplied three is equal to three. So why very likely? Because safety sensors devices were working, but once they are out of order, this one will convert it into three. So three multiplied three is equal to nine. So this equation indicates the risk was acceptable at the time of initial risk assessment of compact was carried out. Now the two is the risk matrix shown in the question is three multiplied three. Again, the same, you know, same stories like we mentioned above. Risk man defined as a risk is equal to likelihood multiplied severity. As for the scenario, the safety protection device of competitor was failed. So now likelihood of the accident will be changed for unlikely to likely if the accident occurred. So risk is equal to likely because safety is the device or sensor is not working. So likely multiply major injuries. So risk is equal to two multiply three is equal to six. So six to nine, if that number you get, the equation indicates the risk change signal from acceptable level to unacceptable level. So what is the unacceptable? The red. So if it is coming in red, you know, I can even we can for better clarity, we can mention six to nine is unacceptable. Even, you know, four to nine, if that number four to, sorry, you know, like three to uh, five is tolerable and uh, one to two, in other words, or zero to zero can be there, can't be there because risk we can minimize. So one to two. So this is how we can give some snapshot like one to two is green, three to five, if that number you get is yellow and six to nine number if you get is red, unacceptable. So unacceptable risk means immediate actions. You need to isolate that machine, make sure you know, you don't reoperate until the machine is uh, fixed properly. Okay, so acceptable risk converted into unacceptable level in case safety protection device stops working. Now he's talking about what administrative control we should implement. The second part of the question of six number. As per given scenario, the supermarket shall take further administrative control measures to prevent repeat uh, of such accident in future. Those control measures could be like implementation of safe operating procedure, the SOP. That is number one, administrative control. Other than engineering control, you know, like our training, safety meetings, rules, regulations, warning signs, our toolbox meetings, everything all comes under administrative controls. You know. So provision of uh, job related instruction and training as observed in the given scenario for temporary workers, they were not properly trained. Implementation of PTW system based on the scenario, no permanent system we found there. You can write, I will share this one in the WhatsApp group also inshallah. So whenever you get time, just re-study and, and, and your mind will be more, uh, in better direction, you know, how you have to answer the question, inshallah. Use of uh, pictograms, as observed in the given scenario, the compactor area was having a warning sign, but it's ignored actually, or might be they don't understand. Provision of active monitoring for critical jobs. And as given the scenario, we can't give uh, critical jobs to the temporary newly hired workers actually. So assign competent person for critical jobs, only experience, competent, the right person for the right job for the critical jobs must be there. Now we are giving uh, the task seven, financial arguments for the store manager to improve health and safety. What is the question? We have to give in line with the scenario, the financial argument to convince the store manager that health and safety needs to improve. So 10 marks are there. So we are giving, uh, you know, some uh, financial argument, like Mr. Muhammad also mentioned, as per given scenario, the following financial arguments could be used to convince the store manager that health and safety needs to be improved, like medical treatment expenses. We can tell him this is kind of a direct cost, so we can avoid, you know, if we have a better health and safety system to be implemented, like the injured person, now we have to pay him the compensation and uh, even immediate treatment expenses and all that. Loss of uh, production time, as noticed in the given scenario, few employees were engaged in action investigation. It means during that time, they can't perform their duty and that will have impact on their productivity. Payment of sick leave to injured person. As mentioned in the scenario, there was amputation injury. So we have to 
uh, you know, pay him during his absence due to the medical treatment. Suspension of activity as enforcement agencies subjected and compacted area during their earlier visit. If there is no improvement, the enforcement agency could temporarily suspend the activity, which result in financial loss. Repairs and placement of damage equipment. As per the scenario, accidents were reoccurring. Future reoccurrence could result in damage of equipment because over and over the jam was there, even you know, and they were just ignoring several times. That is why the store manager have to improve health and safety. Damage to business reputation, like Mr. Muhammad mentioned, you know, goodwill gone mean it's all over. So as we notice in the scenario, the accident were happening again, and that may have bad impact on the super market reputation, and that will affect business relations, you know, training expenses and recruitment expenses. Again, you know, uh, in case of swear injuries, we have to retrain and thus required, or even hiring a new person, we need to retrain and make sure, you know, and that is another additional cost. Same case for the recruitment. You know, terminating someone or because of accident, if someone uh, removed, unfortunately, from the job, hiring the new one, ask the HR manager how complicated process that one and how the expenses accruing in. And the worker compensation claim as well. As mentioned in the scenario, the supermarket had paid compensation to the workers. That could be reduced by improving health and safety condition of the supermarket. So good luck the training for IG1. So I will share this uh, scenario in the WhatsApp group. Humble request is whenever you get time, just open and re-study and re-understand. And if you get the different more scenarios uh, through your research, through your professional network, just get them and have a fully idea. And your target should be much, much better than these answers even. That should be your target. Because once your concepts are clear, Invent something productive, more productive, Marshall. So go for the lunch, and inshallah, after the lunch, we'll start IG2. Thank you very much. And I'll share this uh, in the WhatsApp group, okay? Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care, sir.